Do you live your life in color or in neutral? Here to tell us how to transform your life through color is interior designer Maul Anderson, who has a new book out, Change Your Home, Change Your Life with Color. Hi, Maul. So Hi. great to see you. Looking beautiful in purple, by well, the way. thank you, Tanya. And you look beautiful today yourself. Thank you. <laughs> what makes you believe so strongly in the power of color? Well, first of all, color is energy. And I don't know if you know this, but when you look at color, it's not just with your eyes. You're looking at color with a full sensory experience, meaning all of your emotions, all of our senses come to play. And from the time that we're a small child until right this very minute, you are, have created your color story. So we have associations with certain colors yes. that will make us either love or hate that right. color, correct? Like sense memory. Like sense memory, yes. which I find fascinating. It makes total sense to me. But tell us your color story. <laughs> which are your favorite colors? Which are your least favorite colors? Well, first of all, mine was a journey. I started out writing this book. It was going to be a beautiful color book and talk about how color does infuse energy into your life, which it does. But I had fa fallen out of love with color as a small child because I had been abused by a family friend. Went through some trauma. What happens when you go through trauma is you literally go into shock as a small child, and that's how you deal with it. But you go into a state of gray scale, not black and white. Remember the old televisions we used sure, to call black yeah. and white? It wasn't black and white. It was gray scale. So did you associate certain colors with that traumatic period? I did. All the vivid, wonderful, bright colors that we're surrounded by as children went to gray scale. And it was painful memories for me that I wasn't dealing with that I thought I had. And so then when you were able to deal with that and bring back color into your life, yes. did that erase the painful memories? Well, it was a process for mm -hmm. me because I didn't know I hadn't dealt with it. I'm 57 now, and at 40, I started all of a sudden having this feeling of craving color. And then I had finally worked through a lot of the things in my life. I had fallen in love and finally got it right. Mm -hmm. And the joy that was coming through me all of a sudden started to get me to crave color. And I started wanting to knock down walls and lighten up everything. And it's funny because I built a whole career on dark, seductive interiors. <laughs> you changed everything. I did. Total change. I up. completely changed everything. So, what are the colors that speak to you now? What are your favorite colors? Okay, well, I won't lie. My signature color is black. Yes, okay. and black is a color. <laughs> and I treat it like a color. It's right. very empowering. It's very protective. It's a wonderful color. And if you walk through a city, you'll see a lot of black. Right. Because it's safety. But now, of course, purple. Yeah. Violet is one of the colors I'm drawn to. It's one of the highest frequencies of color. And it just makes you feel feel good, you know? So regal. It is, it is. I love blues and greens. I feel like I've always been drawn to them, despite the fact yes. that I'm a Pisces. I, think, yes. I don't know if that has anything to do with that, but I realized when I was reading your book, those are always the colors I instinctively surround myself with at home. Now, that, how would you advise people who are trying to figure out what is my color story, what is my color scheme? Is there a process that they There can is a process, and again, in the book, what I did was I kept going back, because I realized this is a journey, and it can change your life. So I tried to make it an interaction book so there are journal questions you answer things from your childhood something as simple as what was the most used crayon in your box right do you remember yours Gosh, that's a really good question. It must have been a blue or a green, it though. It must green. have been. You know, but I wanted people to go back and really think about their life in school and their friends and the toys they played with. Or, for instance, if you went home to your parents' house today, what one item would you want to take with you to bring home to your house? What color is that item? What did it mean to you? Right. Because everything holds memories. And so now once you've figured this out, once you've gone through this process and you right. say, hey, red, <laughs> speak to me. I'm all about red. Yes. Then how do you take that one step further and put it into to your home in a way that's soothing and that you can live with? Well, you don't have to go crazy. That's okay. the good news. Good. And, I, and I call it the fearless five. Number one, start small, paint a wall. Paint is the most cost-effective decorating tool we have. And the idea is if you love red, okay, for instance, you're sitting in this fabulous red chair. Right, red so don't go nuts. You know, just pick up a red chair. But most importantly, paint a wall. So maybe it's just one wall or your front door. You know, red is a great color, brings good energy to you. It's right. very protective as well. So start small, paint a wall. The other thing would be uh, think about flowers. Flower power your way. Pick up some beautiful red tulips on the way home if red is the color you're trying to bring into your life. Pops of color go a long way. Pillows, throws, think in terms of cost-effective things that can allow you to infuse the color into your life in a very simple way. And then art. And it can be indoor and outdoor color, right? Oh, yes, right? absolutely. And, you know, Pantone Color of the Year is greenery. Yes, And I is. love that. And you is. love green. I love green. And it's great to bring it in organically. Think bowls of limes in your kitchen, fresh mint and herbs. Bring them into your life so that your children learn by example, because they do. Yes. They pay attention. What we've lost in this world is getting back to what's important, taking the time in our home, teaching our children by example, turn on the music, lower the candles, put, you know, 
put the time and energy and get out the good china for pizza. Making that environment yes. so wonderful. Yeah. And what are your feelings about patterns? I love patterns. Yeah. I think it's, we call it pattern play, of yeah. course. And the idea is it's gotta be what's comfortable to you. I cannot tell you what color to love because I don't care what anybody says and I'm not debunking color experts. Colors have certain properties. Sure. But you have to love the color. You have to have passion for that color. It has to make your heart happy. No one can tell you what that color is. So if you fall in love with a pattern, then bring it into your life. Make it into pillows, make it into a fabulous chair. Simple, keep I love think simple. how personal and visceral yeah. our reactions to color are. I'm assuming there's science behind all this as well. There is science behind it. And yeah. if, you, if you read, there's been so many great studies done. You could put two teams together, two of the greatest teams, put one team in red and another team in black and the red will win out every time. Oh, really? It's the aggressive, powerful color, you yeah, know. It's fascinating, fabulous stuff, Mall Anderson. You. Thank you so much for thank coming to you. see us.